Cardano fans, do I have a special treat for you today? I'm joined with Adam Dean, who's a uh, astute member of the Cardano developer community. Uh, he is joining me today. Talk about everything that just happened. Chang Hard Fork uh, has come and gone. Adam, we're going to talk about Chang. We're going to talk about Hydra. We're going to talk about the future of Cardano. What now that the Hard Fork uh, has come and gone? But from your perspective, and, and you know, you're more of an expert in this than I am, obviously, but how did the Hard Fork go? Um, where are we? Was there any hiccups? And, uh, you know, what was your, what was your kind of gauge on that? Uh, no, I mean, I think we're in great position. Uh, the hard fork, like pretty much all the other Cardano hard forks over the last four years kind of came and went. Um, there was so, no watch party. Is, there was no watch party like uh, Ethereum had for the, when they went to proof of stake. Remember they no, had that I really mean, cool watch party? It, we had a whole big space. There was a Twitter space. We were having a space place. I was on a plane in Miami, actually. I was on my way back from Puerto Rico uh, as the hard fork's going on. And I'm like texting people furiously, trying to get updates and <laughs> make sure everything went smoothly. But uh, it was, uh, as usual, a, a relative non-event, uh, which is the best thing you can hope for when you're doing one of these in-place upgrades of any network. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I guess uh, a lot of people watching are, you know, your average Cardano holder. Is there is there anything that they should be aware of or know or make updates to from their end with this new hard fork? Uh, well, there's there's some cool new functionality and features, uh, but nothing uh, mission critical that you have to take action on right this second. Uh, so the really cool thing is if you have I think it's more than 500 ADA uh, in your wallet, you can actually register to uh, be a self voter. Uh, and be an active voter in Cardano's on-chain governance now uh, that just got enabled. Um, and if you're not interested in that, uh, other people that uh, register can register as uh, delegate delegated representatives uh, or essentially vote to be able to vote on your behalf. Uh, and so I'd give it a, you know, a few weeks uh, for all of those people to really get registered up and ready to go. And then after that point, uh, if you don't want to vote for yourself or you have less than 500 ADA, uh, you can choose to delegate to one of these uh, DREPs, as we call them, uh, so that they can vote on your behalf and, and participate in Cardano governance. Um, so that's a really kind of exciting point. We're kind of in a a holding pattern for the next 90 days while all these uh, all these voters kind of get online and spun up and then we'll have another hard fork sometime around december uh to really kick governance into high gear and that's part two of chain correct i, I was just gonna ask yeah. you the same thing okay so we know part one we know well we've covered this on our show all the time but we know part two is what unlocks that treasury reserve so within the next 90 days prior to part two what does governance look like? What are we voting on? What are we delegating? Like, what 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 does that scenario look like? So there's there's only a limited number of uh, actions that we're allowed to take, uh, particularly for people like myself who are part of the interim constitutional committee. Um, we have kind of for the time being replaced the the genesis keys as the people that could make emergency protocol parameter changes and do things like that uh, but we can't touch the treasury uh and we can't do a lot of the the regular everyday uh, activities that you would expect from governance until chain part two um, so what i'm expecting to see is i think we're going to see a lot more process on the budget process uh and uh, like I said, I was down in Puerto Rico. I was actually attending a Cardano Constitution workshop there in Luquillo, Puerto Rico. Um, so we're going to see a lot of the community, over 50 countries worldwide, uh, participating and helping to draft a community constitution that's going to kind of govern uh, some of the more, uh, I guess, wet or uh, ambiguous areas of governance that can't be solved by a code is law solution. What are what, what the uh, anything that comes to mind when you say that the un, the ambiguous and stuff that you can't really control is there any specific scenario or items that come to mind? Uh well the big thing is how do we spend that treasury, right? Um uh, because the the blockchain and the ledger doesn't necessarily know hey we've already spent a billion this year let's not spend any more. Um so we're going to we're going to need some guardrails like that that still need a, a level of human oversight. And that's what the constitutional committee is kind of there for. It'd be like, okay, guys, like we get that you're eager to, to spend all that treasury money. Who wouldn't be? But uh, let's pump the brakes until uh, you guys figure out a, a clear budget of how we're going to spend that and why. 
You know, um, I, I've i watched, and, you know, uh, us ourselves, you know, we, we put in a proposal for th through Polkadot, through their DAO, to get some of the marketing money, and we got denied. But I know a lot of people got a lot of money, and I've kind of not really made fun of them, but I'm like, hey, this probably isn't the best way to spend your money, right? Because, you know, immediately you're going to get that sell pressure, and not even from a price standpoint, but the money that you've spent... What is it doing to grow the adoption on the Polkadot network? There seem to be more focus on brand recognition. Do you have any any fears or any um, kind of, you know, hesitation as to what the Cardano community, what things are they going to vote for to approve for spending? Is there, you're pretty plugged in uh, with the entire Cardano community, with the developers, with with really everyone in that ecosystem. Any any trepidations you have, or how do you see this thing playing out? Uh, yeah, I, I think it would be crazy to to not be a little bit nervous about how yeah. this whole thing goes, right? Um, but overall, I'm confident. I think the the Cardano community has a lot of uh, really powerful voices, and they're they're concerned with the right things. They're they're radical decentralization maxis. Um, they're they're radically uh, kind of dedicated to a, a hard cap and solid solid and responsible monetary policy, and I think that's going to rein in and keep in check a lot of the more frivolous spending that we might see. Uh, but you're right. I mean, every time we take money out of that treasury or project catalyst, we're we're looking at indirect sell pressure. So we have to try to make sure uh, that we're using those funds in a way that grows and supports the overall ecosystem. But of course, everybody thinks, hey, if we give it to, to Dave and Rob and Sin City Crypto, that's gonna drive up adoption, right? Like, and we're gonna have all these new people coming on board. Uh, <laughs> whether or not that actually pans out, um, but luckily Polkadot has done a lot of things that we can learn from. Uh, and so that's the really great thing is, uh, you know, hopefully we won't spend uh, a few hundred million on a, an animated logo on CMC. Um, if nothing yeah. else, it was yeah. And and to be and, clear, and hold on, we're we're getting uh getting some developer money here. What? No, we're not. Uh, to be <laughs> clear, uh, as a channel, we love Cardano so much that that we will continue to talk about it, whether we get paid to do so or not. Uh, and so you won't see a proposal from uh, Sin City Crypto on this stuff we already do. And so, um, I, what I kind of wanted to ask you too, Adam, is <sighs> nine. So ninety days, Chang two point comes out. Like, could people start sending proposals in to spend the money then? Is there like a cool off period or is that those parameters still not in place until that constitution gets drafted? Uh, well, so technically after Chang plus two, anybody can submit and the D reps can vote. Um, but again, we have that constitutional committee and right now we're operating underneath the interim constitution. And so the interim constitution at the very least says that no treasury withdrawal is allowed to happen until the community has passed a budget. So no budget, no treasury. Uh, so the very first thing we have to do is decide uh, a budget, which will hopefully say, hey, here's how much we're gonna spend over the next year. We're gonna spend X million on development. We're gonna spend X million on marketing. We're gonna spend, you know, and then based on that, uh, once somebody comes along and proposes a withdrawal, we can go, is it in line with the budget? Um, and is it, uh, you know, otherwise good? And then it's up to the D reps, uh, the voters, to say yes or no. We actually want to spend the money with these people. So we've got a, a kind of a couple layers of protection there uh, to to keep keep the community safe from a, a massive treasury drain. Uh, but again, it's going to be up to the community and the voters to decide how they want to spend it. And unfortunately, we all think we're right in the moment, right. uh, whether or not we're right historically. We have to wait and see. So. You know, uh, and Adam, uh, one more thing about about this treasury because you know I feel like for, from the community standpoint that that's been a lot of a lot of the talk. And I've seen, hey, uh, we should vote to burn that 1.5 billion ADA. Some people are saying we should take that and buy Bitcoin as a reserve. And so, any any thoughts on those two scenarios or or anything? You know, I, the pushback on the whole Bitcoin reserves is well, why would you spend ADA to to get another coin? Just spend it for their own ecosystem. Some people are like, burn it, get rid of it, uh, it eliminates the sell pressure. But obviously you have some, you know, back end issues there is you're not going to be able to spend the money to grow the network. Well, what are your kind of thoughts there? 
Yeah, well, you know, uh, for one, uh, why take 1.5 billion ADA and then increase Bitcoin dominance? Um, that seems kind of uh, counterintuitive and ironic. Uh, and I have also heard, you know, invest in stable coins. So uh, the treasury is less susceptible to price fluctuations. There's a lot of uh, kind of thinking around maintaining and securing the value of the treasury. Um, but again, all of those are kind of indirect sell pressures on the price of ADA. Uh, so it's kind of trading a, a market spot sell of ADA at current price for the a, a spot swap, uh, but it kind of has the same functionality. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of opposed to those ideas. Uh, however, you know, we have to see. Uh, I'm one guy. And uh, again, if it's in line with what the, the budget says, um, then my job, like on the, the Constitutional Committee, is just to say, yep, it's allowed, uh, whether or not I agree with that particular proposal. Uh, I feel like uh, when this is all in place and we're running for like two years, we should like uh, pick up the phone and call Washington, D.C. and be like, hey, guys, uh, this is how government should be ran. Uh <laughs> Not just frivolous spending. Right. And, Here, uh, here's a balanced budget that we can't just run up the debt, right? Like we, yeah. we don't have so much. And There's parameters, the okay? Debt. You can't spend more than what you bring in, all right? Um, Adam, I want to shift the conversation to uh, Rare Evo. And we ran into you there. Um, and we saw, first we saw a video of this before we went to the convention. Went to the convention, we saw it. It's, of course, I'm talking about Hydra Doom. I want to share a video here of my co-host Robin uh, playing Hydra Doom at the Rare Evo conference. Um, and so can you kind of, and I've, I've muted this, but can you kind of explain what's going on? You see those meters on the right talking about global TPS and, and local TPS. What was the point of integrating Hydra with a video game like Doom? Uh, well, so uh, the big thing is, you know, really us being computer nerds, uh, will it run Doom has been one of the big questions uh, from the beginning. And we wanted a cool demo of how how can Hydra work? How does it make sense? And one of the, the easy uh, slam dunks for these kind of uh, ephemeral state channel L2 solutions is for something like anti-cheat in gaming. Um, so when you're looking at uh, those cabinets, we're actually broadcasting every single frame of the game was a new transaction being broadcast to a Hydra head. Uh, and whether or not that was a legal move was being validated by uh, a Plutus smart contract written in Aiken on uh, Cardano uh, running inside of that Hydra head. So it was able to do 35 transactions per second per uh, person that was playing the game during the demo. Uh, and so we saw uh, a few hundred, I think, or a few thousand people get playing at the same time. And we got up to, I think, 4,600 uh, TPS concurrent across all the different Doom demos and Hydra heads that were running. And those are, and um, Adam, and, not to cut you off, but yeah. those are real smart contract transactions, not fluff or voting, right? Correct, yeah. I mean, so that, that could have real impact, like uh, especially if you were doing a, a gaming tournament uh, and if it was found out that you cheated, you get ejected out and your prize money gets defaulted into the pot, right? Or the, the winner of the tournament at the end of the day gets gets all the money that's left over uh, and you're actually validating that with a contract. So while these, these transactions for the demo were not actually publishing to uh, the mainnet, uh, as a proof of concept, you it very easily could. Um, so uh, we've got some interesting ideas rattling around in our brain for what the next iteration of that demo looks like. Yeah. We're excited to see it, man. It was, it was a lot of fun seeing it in action. Adam, I want to ask you, you know, say we're, we're two years, three years for the year is 2028. Let's just call it right. Hydra heads are spun up. Well, what is the theoretical max transactions per second? If, if everything is running as it should with Hydra, uh, and the, uh, the Hydra heads, I don't know, Call it, you know, there's what, 3,300 stake pool operators. You figure each one has a head, 3,300. What's the max TPS we can see from, from a project like Cardano with everything in place with Hydra? Uh, well, that's really going to depend on if we find the good real-world use cases for Hydra. Um, and we actually have 3,300 heads running concurrently. Uh, I think with the smart contracts we were running for Doom, we were maxing out at, I want to say about 200 transactions per second per head. 
Um, so we could have about five concurrent players per head uh, running on this particular demo. For simpler, uh, kind of like just straight token swap transactions, we were uh, benchmarking around 800 to 1,000 wow. transactions per head. So yeah, just extend that out to, you know, 3,300 or even more heads operating because there's no necessary strict requirement that uh, a head operator has to be a, a stake pool operator. Those things aren't uh, necessarily mutually exclusive. So you can actually run heads independent of uh, stake pools and then just settle back to mainnet uh, at whatever time makes sense for your L2. So theoretically, uh, we could be looking at multiple millions of concurrent transactions all happening and then rolling back up eventually to the mainnet. Um, but it's, uh, again, important to put it into context. These are, are state channel transactions, not necessarily L1 transactions. Awesome. And uh, Adam, I'll, I'll kind of end with this. Um, you know, we briefly spoke about Chang Part 2 coming in around December. You know, that's a tentative time frame. But well, outside of that, is there anything else you're focused on going into the end of 2024 and kind of bleeding into 2025? Maybe what, what, what you got in your pecking order of what's most important for, for the network? Uh, no, yeah, for the, for the network, definitely uh, the, the vision has to stay on both scaling and governance. But I think governance is still kind of, for me, the number one priority, right? We need to make sure that that community constitution is, is well run. We're having our constitutional convention in Buenos Aires uh, in December. Um, so hopefully we'll see the, the community constitution and the budget uh, and really be able to unlock the next phase of Cardano development and growth uh, via unlocking this treasury and unlocking on-chain community governance so that the community gets to decide uh, how we move forward from here. And I know uh, we got a lot of people that care about scaling. So we're going to keep doing Doom. We have a ton of things coming up with partner chains and side chains and, and, and other things to help kind of grow and offset uh, congestion and bandwidth issues. Uh, so it's definitely a, an exciting time for me uh, to see where Cardano goes from here. Yeah. Exciting for me as well. Uh, Adam, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I was a and, uh, to Adam, is there any other game in the works? I'm a big I'm a big uh, video game nerd. You got anything else coming down? Maybe some Halo, I, Mortal Kombat? I don't know. <laughs> what do you got? There's a lot of cool ideas that you can do with this, uh, this gaming system. I think we need to kind of work on the tooling and the SDK so that more gaming projects can more easily integrate something like Hydra. Um, but yeah, I'm looking at, you know, open Civ and some of these other kind of free, uh, freeware, shareware, uh, or open source gaming things that we could, uh, kind of easily implement. And, and then of course, you know, we're, we're all from Vegas or the, the surrounding area, uh, playing a poker tournament, but having it all, you know, happen on a blockchain, uh, via Hydra heads is a, a really interesting concept. That so. is a very interesting concept, except when I lose, which I, I, I didn't, I didn't regular. get to sit at the, the main table there, uh, like David did, uh, at the, the rare Evo, uh, you know, snack classic, but you know, uh, I, I told the uh, story about, uh, you know, someone brought up USD university of San Diego. And I told the story about how, uh, I, I said no to Jim Harbaugh. And then my wife, I get home, she's like, you got an offer to go to USD. And you said, no. Because you had a girlfriend, I didn't know that. I'm like, oh well, uh, now you know. <laughs> it was uh, it was a lot of fun, man. You know, if uh, to the people watching, if you've uh, if you've never been to a Cardano themed convention, and I, and I know you know Rare Evo had you know Algorand was there, we know um, ICP was there, but it, let, let's face it, it was the majority of it was Cardano, and it was great, man. It was fun. It was exciting meeting the people, talking to the people. I know we ran into you. You literally walked us right over to the Doom game something that we've been talking about, you know, Rob was wanting to play. And so it's a lot of exciting things happening when you step outside of social media and this echo chamber of hearing the same people say the same things, whether it's another channel, or even whether it's our channel, just step outside the step outside of, of where you are now, the platforms you're getting your information and go to these real live events, meet people, talk to them. What are you building? What are you excited about? And so uh, you'll see that, um, Cardano is one of the most exciting ecosystems to be in right now. And what they've done essentially, correct me if I'm wrong, Adam, is turn Cardano into the world's largest DAO, correct? I mean, yeah, uh, most likely. Um, yeah. You know, it probably, I would say, have the, the most members. I don't know uh, where the, uh, 
the the others stand in terms of their treasury size, but yeah. uh, at least in the the terms of the largest number of members. And yeah, it, it is actually fully decentralized. Is the fun thing there? There is yeah. no no emergency eject. It's all on us now, and and so it's. You hear that, Gary Gensler? Uh, and, and we also we also chose Cardano to do our our crypto almanac on. So we're gonna get a physical copy, which is our, our magazine, like forecasting, kind of like the big, yeah. the the big milestones for twenty twenty five, a little little price prediction ish on uh, on Bitcoin and and the markets. And uh, we chose Cardano because uh, you know what they have a pretty cool platform for for magazine style NFT uh, or comic book kind of style NFT. So um, yeah, real world use cases being put to use. Excited. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And yeah, echoing David's sentiment, you know, that uh, coming out to the events is great because I, I even get find new projects that I didn't hear about or know about uh, when I go out to these events. Um, so it's amazing to see how big how big the community is and all the cool things that are being built. Amen to that. And it's only going to get more exciting. Uh, Adam, we appreciate you as always, my friend. Thank you so much. We're looking forward. We look forward to doing this uh, with you again. Keep the Cardano community up to date on everything that is happening behind the scenes and the important things they need to know. So, Adam, thank you. And guys watching, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more Cardano content, and we will see you next time. Peace.